My next guest, getting seated right now, could be considered one of the best at funding the creative projects that shape how we live. Yancey Strickler is the CEO and one of the co-founders of Kickstarter. It has launched, it launched five years ago, rather, 71,000 projects, plus or minus, back to the tune of a billion with a B dollars by 7.2 million people donating that money. But it is not all about um, cold, hard numbers with Yancey Strickler. So first of all, thank you so much for coming out. Yeah, thanks really for The fancy schmancy word here uh, for what you guys do uh, is disintermediation, right? Taking the middleman out of the equation and putting creative types in this economy in touch with the number of people who have the money, right? Yeah, absolutely. How did this happen? You're, you're waiting, you're what? You're a regular at a restaurant down in the village somewhere and your waiter has this idea? That's almost the way it happened, right? Yeah, that's pretty much literally the way it happened. Uh, you know, my favorite number for the night, I, actually, I was yes. trying to think about what that was. Please tell and, me it's not my salary. And the number... <laughs> also, please tell me you make more than I do. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to have to Google that. Now you have to look uh, <laughs> My number was two. Uh, and two is, uh, there's a restaurant uh, in Brooklyn called Diner. It's in Williamsburg. This is a place where I've been a regular for many years. And two is the second seat at the bar, uh, which is where I sat when I met Perry, uh, my co-founder of Kickstarter, who is my waiter. Uh, and that second seat at the bar is also... Uh, where I sat really on my first real date with my partner, Jamie, who's here tonight. But same seat, both of those, probably the two most important things in my life. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the way it started was, um, you know, Perry was a, 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 an artist and uh, someone who had a lot of interesting ideas, and he had this thought about uh, creating a system where you could propose an idea to the world and people would support it if they wanted to, but no one would be charged unless everyone thought it was a good idea. Just to drill down a little bit, he wanted to put on a concert or something, Yeah, he wanted right? to put on a concert in, in New Orleans yeah. uh, in like 2000, 2001. So the idea is 15, 14 years old for him. Uh, wow. And so when we met, I was a music journalist, a rock critic writing for The Village Voice and a few other places, and we decided to try to work on it together. Uh, and also, because I was thinking about numbers, it was 900 days after he told me about the idea that we managed to launch the site. So three, well, that's not bad. Two, three and a half three years, something, years? Yeah, yeah. something like that. So it took a while. Um, we had you on Marketplace uh, two and a half years ago uh, when you were not yet the guy running the company, right? Mm -hmm. We were talking backstage and you were talking about how, you know, you've got 100 people counting on you now. I wonder how your life has changed now that you are the guy responsible for the numbers, almost, almost literally. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's interesting. So there, you know, there's three of us who started it, um, yeah. and I was always, uh, I don't know, I, I did customer service when we first began. I was always the friendly person who could go shake everybody's hand and talk to creators all day, and that's yeah. just kind of how I enjoy life. Uh, and very much someone that cares more about art and culture than anything else. Uh, beginning of this year, my partner Perry stepped uh, up to become chairman and to go back to being a full-time artist, and I became CEO. Uh, I've always had a fascination with numbers and with business, uh, <laughs> despite, I don't know, it's like a weird foreign thing to me to pay attention to. But this year, I've, but this year I have <laughs> We should had totally to not tell the people that work at Kickstarter yeah. that it's a foreign well, thing they, for you. That they can be... tell, they can tell. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, actually having to understand that uh, and become really deep with it has become a, a new thing for me this year, although that isn't the biggest challenge at all. I mean, the, the, biggest, the, biggest, challenge? the biggest challenge of a job like this is just the weight. W-E-I-G-H-T. Uh, it's, it's the weight of uh, 100 people yeah. uh, who depend on you. It's the weight of the 7 million people who have backed a project right. before, probably some of whom are in this audience. Yeah, probably, uh, yeah. And, it's, and it's, it's the weight of uh, trying to lead something that uh, we believe can inspire a new creative golden age uh, and really feeling um, the power and the privilege of leading that. And, and wanting to do right by it. It's, it's, it's phenomenal and, uh, and incredibly difficult. It, it occurs to me there is not actually a moment when you as a CEO can stop worrying, right? Uh, no, definitely not. Yeah. Definitely not. Um, it also occurs to me, standing here in the moment, that I should, there should be some full disclosure. We have a colleague at Marketplace. Her name is Amy Scott. She's our education reporter down at, at WYPR in Baltimore. Just recently funded a film through Kickstarter mm -hmm. um, about a project she did. And, it, and it, you know, it was my first Kickstarter donation. You have done 976 plus or minus? That's out of date. It's, I think, 1172. 1172. Yeah, projects that I've supported on my own. Wow. 
Uh, there have been uh, 350 people have supported more than 50 projects in just the past 60 days. This is like the new Medici uh, happening crazy. here. It really is. It really is. I mean, if you think about 7 million people contributing more than a billion dollars to people making ideas, like this is, this is patronage, uh, you know, turbocharged. Uh, and I, I, you know, a, a couple more numbers for yeah, you. Yeah, go ahead. 1713 uh, was the first Kickstarter project. It was by a guy named Alexander Pope uh, to translate the Iliad into English for the first time. Wow. 17,000 lines. Yes, he did. He got right. 700 subscribers to give him money and fund him spending four years translating 17,000 lines of Greek poetry into English. To that, we have to add the guy who got $55,000 for the potato salad thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Really, I'm, history, I'm, I'm just there's, saying. There's like two points in history. Yeah, Homer, <laughs> Homer and, and the potato salad. And the dude with the potato and salad. It, the and and also, the $13 million, I think it's $13 million, that the guy got for the, for the cooler on the beach with the, with the player, the music player in it. What it's is been, that? Yeah, it's been a wild year. Uh, also, 100,000 people supporting Reading Rainbow, bringing Reading yeah, Rainbow with, back. With LeVar Burton, uh, right. Hell yeah. Right. Um, I wonder how you... Um, as an entrepreneur in the beginning, explained something that didn't exist, right? It's, it's Here's this idea we have where we go out and ask people for money. How'd you do that? Yeah, it was, it was terrible. Uh, it, <laughs> it was terrible, but I, I, I now view it as a real privilege. Um, you, you learn a lot. You know, we for four years went around pitching people on this idea that really had no analog whatsoever. Um, and just a totally new concept. And we met uh, a lot of very uh, prominent investors who every single one of them told us no. One guy yeah. said, there's already enough art in the world. Why does there need to be more? Uh, wow. It's like, all right, we're going to wrap yeah. this up. Uh, <laughs> Thanks for coming. But, uh, but I, I, just the thing that I, I, I really found with that is you, there's this moment, I see it happening right now, where someone's eyes start to dim and you're like, I'm boring you. No, uh, man. And then you immediately just start to edit. You're just like, I'm gonna, <laughs> I, you, the next time I'm, you give that talk, you become a little bit smarter right. about what is it that's right. resonant about what you're doing. Right. But yeah, so for four years trying to get people to understand this thing. Uh, and, and the day it launched, I mean, it launched Tuesday, April 28th at 4.20 p.m. So it was just like, shit was no longer broken. It was yeah. like, just go. Uh, you know, I think for my friends, it was like, oh, really? You, you actually did that thing? Yeah. Like, you know, we've been, been talking about it for four years. And then when it becomes a real thing, uh, it's even weirder. I mean, it was on, Kickstarter was on South Park two weeks ago. They did a whole episode about Kickstarter. Uh, and I got so many texts and emails from old friends that were like, whoa, dude, that thing you did was on South Park. Holy shit. Uh, <laughs> Which is honestly exactly now, the same way that I feel about it. I mean, I can completely concur. It's Yancey bizarre. Yancey Strickland, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, right. Kickstarter. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. That was awesome.